This is a good question, this one. Actually, when I left high school, I never dreamed um, that I would end up in the mining industry because it was actually, in fact, still illegal for women back then to be underground in New South Wales and Queensland. Um, and But anyway, looking to um, pay for university, I had to work and I actually gained a accounting traineeship with EY. And um, once I finished my qualifications there, I was very fortunate to um, get an opportunity to build a brand new coal mine out in the Hunter Valley and from there I've never looked back. I think it definitely helps to have the continued support and promotion of organisations such as the Women in Mining New South Wales, which, you know, our objectives are to support, nurture, promote, connect and empower the women um, in New South Wales minerals industry. Um, and, you know, WimNet New South Wales promotes diversity and inclusion through networking events, mentoring, professional development initiatives. Um, and I wanted to plug that, you know, WimNet New South Wales is free and open to everyone, regardless of um, gender and where you are in your career. And, um, and it's definitely not a secret society for women. Um, approximately, you know, 20% of our members are men and that's the similar percentages across all our other states um, because it's really important to have our male champions of change to be involved in this important process. Um, but looking at other sectors, I think our, our big thing is that we need to be able to attract people to mining in general um, and hence we need to advocate for some more balanced awareness of the benefits of mining as the mere mention of mining tends to generate some range of reviews, reactions and sometimes emotions as you probably know. Um, and as a developed society, we're fortunate to enjoy many benefits of mining um, and min of minerals and resources help to provide that, you know, many people take for granted, uh, such as low cost, uh, reliable energy and the materials necessary to build our homes, schools, hospitals, roads, transportation and even our phones and computers that we're using today. So, um, you know, we need to, you know, look at other sectors on how they promote their industry and maybe try and do a bit better on ours as well. And hopefully in turn that will, you know, um, you know, encourage people to to apply for jobs that we have in the mining industry and um, and we grow bigger and better from there. So yeah, STEM I think is absolutely the passport for the future. There's a real concern we might not have enough STEM qualified people for upcoming jobs. Um, I think it's important that we need to connect with probably the Department of Education as early as primary school so that you know girls understand why STEM is important and what the opportunities are actually available. And um, I've actually been connecting recently with some really good um, initiatives that are currently being uh, run. So there's the CSIRA STEM uh, professionals in school, which is a national volunteer program that sort of facilitates partnerships between schools and industries to bring, you know, real STEM into the classroom. And the other one that, uh, funny enough, I was just emailing this morning is the AMMA's Bright Future STEM program. Uh, again, another national program that, in, you know, engages sort of, you know, nine to 12 year old girls and boys uh, in STEM um, to get sort of that energy resources industry experiences um, and it also provides them exposure to female STEM professionals and tries to encourage that interest in STEM careers. So um, hopefully, you know, Women in Mining uh, New South Wales will be able to make some links to that and we'll be able to start promoting that. I know uh, WomNet Victoria is already um, engaging with the, the program with the CSIRO and um, it's about promoting um you know, those programs that are there um, and, and getting them to the schools. And if, if we can't bring the Department of Education and the teachers on board, then it's going to be really hard to try and filter that through to the students. thinking cap on that and thought what do we do so um, business I think to can attract female talent by ensuring a couple of really simple things so it's ensuring your your job advertisements are, are more inclusive firstly um, and making sure you're tailoring your interview process um, may just include you know making sure there's a female staff member um, preferably in leadership that's involved in the interview process um, you know having even having your own women in leadership roles uh, within the business um, will naturally attract um, more females um, participating in mentoring and leadership type programs as you know there's there's a few out there 
and really big things like what you're doing now is sharing stories of women who are succeeding across all levels of your organisation. Um, introducing ne external networking is um, a big thing. Um, there's other companies that have got incentivised a joint paternity leave um, and, of course, allowing employees to be more flexible and have a good work-life balance and um, making sure, uh, not lastly but not leastly, engaging and educating male allies who will be our champions of change. So I think if you did all that, then we would probably be in a good position to try and attract and recruit some really good females. Right, well, this is where I'm going to plug our award winning <laughs> Women in Mining New South Wales Mentoring Program. Um, so, you know, ours is in our seventh year. We have a number of um, these programs um, run across different states. Um, just here in New South Wales, we've been able to help um, almost 250 women with guidance, career development, personal growth opportunities. Um, and it's open to all women working in the resources sector, you know, regardless of the length of service, their location, their sector sector um, and it's you know to improve female representations at all levels of the business um, you know I've seen benefits of these program assist mentees progress through their careers to bigger and better opportunities including overseas positions and it's really truly wonderful to see these individuals grow and shine um, and you know it's um, you know the benefits of sponsors such as yourselves that help us get these programs um, off the ground but I do encourage companies to speak to their employees of people who have participated as a mentee or a mentor to hear about their experience to understand the difference the program has actually made in their life and of course I'd have to say that um, if it sounds something that you might want to be a part of then I fully encourage you to apply next year. So diversity and inclusion, I think it's definitely improved over the last three decades that I've been in the workforce, but we've still got a way to go. Um, I think it's marvellous opportunities like, you know, the top 100 global inspirational women in mining publication, the women in mining mentoring programs and, you know, organisational d &I policies that are truly embedded now that have provided women um, with the strength to further encourage their progression and development within the mining and mineral sector. But I suppose I want to highlight that inclusion is the most important part of the equation. Um, a great analogy I was told several years ago, which I'll never forget, is that diversity is like being invited to the party, but inclusion is being asked to dance. And I think that's really important. There are a couple, but um, I suppose one is not having the confidence in yourself is a large problem for women. I know I suffer from this um, from time to time. You know, for example, if a position was open, women tend to only apply if they meet, you know, nine to ten of the criteria, when men will always give it a crack if they meet only even five or six of those, you know, items. Um, clearly, um, structural problems, um, institutional mindsets, unconscious bias and, you know, even lifestyle choices has attributed to the failure of women to break through that proverbial glass ceiling. Um, and, you know, there's also the issue of, um, you know, of women's disproportionate responsibility of having to care um, for people in the, ho the housework, you know, resulting in that sort of double burden for women sometimes, especially when you're taking on a senior management um, career, makes it more difficult to pursue. But, I mean, I'm lucky that um, my husband definitely helps out. He probably does all the cleaning and I do the cooking. But, um, you know, that, that tends to be maybe, you know, we're moving away from that mindset. Um I think definitely the lack of flexible working arrangements, particularly in high level of the company, has contributed to this problem in the past. But I suppose one good thing of COVID is that it really has forced businesses to enable work from home strategies and engage people in virtual meetings like this. So um, hopefully that's one thing that, um, you know, will go away with, um, you know, very shortly. The big thing is you can't be what you can't see. 
um, you know, a large majority of females in Australia um, probably rightly feel that women are unrepresented in leadership positions. So um, hence it's up to us in leadership positions to lead by example and, you know, assist our fellow brethren by me mentoring, talking at events, networking, um, promoting women through awards or showcasing what can be done. Um, I remember a few years ago I gave a career progression talk at one of the Women in Mining regional events uh, where the current financial accountant of the mine I first started at was actually there and she came up to me afterwards um, to tell me she was in that current position and she never would have thought it was possible to be, you know, in that position and eventually she could be a director of a mine mining company in the future so it's about you know encouraging each other I try to empower people to be the best that they can be um, and I think you need to believe in yourself and have the courage to follow your dreams so it's participating in you know things like this um, that I hope that I have the motivation you know to help other women by showing that with a bit of effort and determination and the willingness to help others that you can reach um, any target you put your mind to no matter what gender you are. So yeah, personally, I'm against um, quotas and do prefer targets that can be tailored, monitored and adjusted by a company so it's appropriate for that organisation and the environment it's um, operating in, unlike, you know, quotas that are set and fixed by external party. Um, you know, it's about that ownership of performance goals by individuals that, you know, is linked um, to have that increased likelihood of um, achieving them. You know, my main issue with quotas, as you said, it may mean that attaining seniority through this mechanism, women may be marginalised and viewed as tokens rather than have actually achieved the role through merit. Um, and I have seen that um, in the past. So also quotas may mean that a good male candidate may be overlooked, which uh, would be advantageous for the business itself and, again, may possibly cause women to be viewed less favourably. Um, I think it's about remembering life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. Um, and by that I mean, you know, try and accept all opportunities as they come along, even if it means there's a bit of hardship for a period of time, such as having to relocate regionally um, or being put out of your comfort zone when you have to network. Um, believe it or not, I am actually an introvert and I, I have to force myself to get out there and um, talk and, um, you know, engage with people. But um, one of my best lessons learned in my mining career was that you need to get out and around your mine site regularly if you really want to be good at your job, as you need to understand the business that you're going, you know, if you want to make a valuable contribution on the way the company's run. And also, um, if you always do what you've always done, then you're only ever going to get what you've always gotten. So you need to make sure you have that um, continuous improvement and to look outside the box. Oh, gosh, I'll, I've been trying to think of that. Look, I, I keep coming back to I wish I had a formal mentor earlier in my career and as that would have made life a lot easier seeming, you know, the results that, you know, I mentioned earlier, there's so much benefits to be gained from mentoring programs. So, yeah, I wish that had been um, been there earlier. <laughs>